Good morning, children. Last class we learned about communicable diseases, right, and their prevention as well as the spread of it. Today, in today's class, we are going to learn about non-communicable diseases. So I have told you we have two types of diseases. What what we learned earlier was communicable, which spreads from one person to another person. And what the, what are the communicable diseases we learn about is malaria, cholera, typhoid, and tuberculosis as well as ringworm right you remember so today we are going to learn about non communicable diseases okay so let us look into what is a non communicable disease first thing disease which do not spread from one person to another person is known as non communicable disease in communicable we saw it spreads right from one person to another person but here this non communicable disease it doesn't spread from one person to another person now let us list out what are the non communicable diseases we have first thing you can see on this picture we have cardiovascular diseases diabetes we have chronic respiratory diseases cancer cardiovascular diseases is related to the heart diseases people get uh, heart attack likewise chronic respiratory diseases are like the lung diseases or you have breathing issues called asthma even the cancer it is also known as a non communicable disease so here diabetes cancer heart disease chronic respiratory diseases are the non communicable diseases okay remember that now let us look into how non communicable diseases are caused how the how they are caused they are not caused by germs like communicable diseases you remember in communicable diseases it we all know it is caused either through the mosquito bites or through my bacteria or other microorganisms but non communicable diseases is not caused by germs it is a combination of genetic lifestyle and environmental factors you know which cause this communicable non communicable disease okay now excess amount of sugar in your daily diet can cause diabetes that means the person who is suffering from diabetes has high level of sugar in the blood if you are in taking uh, the diets which contains lots of sugar then definitely we will get infected with diabetes okay so likewise it matters the diet matters a lot for the non communicable disease as i've told you diabetes either it comes like hereditary like genetic if we have our grandfather or someone it's not necessary but still our parents have the children also will get diabetes so it's genetic or sometimes it's our lifestyle of living even the food eating habits so it depends the next thing what we are going to learn is heart disease we all know it's like eating foods rich in fat if we eat lot of food diets which contain fat then definitely will get cardiovascular diseases okay so like in today's um, you can see the lifestyle we eat a lot of junk foods which also contains lot of fat we all love eating pizza we all love eating uh, cheese sandwich all it contains a lot of fats and when we are consuming this a lot then a lot of fat is intaken in so we get heart diseases okay the next is smoking can cause cancer so those who are regular smokers those who smoke they will get cancer these all you have seen children these uh, non communicable diseases is not spread by germs or bacteria as i've told you it's genetic and depends on our food habit and the lifestyles we live but in today's world most of the people they follow what they love eating the junk foods so you can see uh almost like 80% of the people are suffering from such diseases not only adolescents elders even few children are there who are suffering from diabetes from childhood so kindly look into uh, your diet part because diet plays a major role now let's see deficiency disease we are going to learn about the next disease that's called as deficiency diseases let's see what are deficiency diseases these are caused when the body does not get the sufficient amount of nutrients let us see what are the types of deficiency diseases and look into that in detail now let's see the types of deficiency diseases we have scurvy 
night blindness, rickets, anemia and goiter. So let us look into each one of them in detail. Okay, let's look scurvy which is a deficiency disease. How it is caused? Let's see. When you are suffering from scurvy, you have a swollen and uh, bleeding gums. You can see here in the picture also. So you will suffer from this if you have and how it is caused due to lack of vitamin C. If you are not taking a diet which contains vitamin C, it's lacking in your daily diets, then definitely you will uh, suffer from the scurvy issues. Okay? So it can be cured by having a diet which is rich in vitamin C. We all know what are vitamin C rich food. That's orange, we can have milk, egg, all you have to consume it in a proper way and make sure that on a daily diet if you have it then it's good for you taking the right amount of vitamin c then you won't be facing such issues now let's see the next deficiency disease which is night blindness that means what a person will not be able to see in the night time in dim lights he might have some issues in his eyes in this way that he won't be able to see in the night time daytime he can see but in the dim lights he won't, won't be able to see it clearly so that's night blindness and it is caused due to what due to the lack of vitamin a if your uh, diet or food is uh, lacking vitamin a then you you will suffer from night blindness so how it can be cured by intaking a lot of food items which is rich in vitamin a so let's see the next one we are going to learn about is rickets you can see here in the picture rickets is nothing but bones become soft and twisted it looks curved you might have noted in few people and this is caused due to what let's see it is caused due to la lack of vitamin d and calcium if we don't have the correct amount of vitamin d and calcium in our body we might suffer from rickets and it can be cured by having again having such diet which is containing vitamin d and calcium okay now let's see the next anemia those who are suffering from anemia have paleness paleness you can see paleness they their uh, even their nails will be looking pale and very thin and even they will get frequently tired and even you can see their eyes it will be looking light yellowish in color those are suffering from anemia as well as their skin is pale and patchy so those are suffering from severe anemic problem they suffer from the fainting issues as well as the heart diseases chest pain and all okay so let's see how it is caused even one more thing i would like to tell you anemia exactly means the red blood cell count will be less here you can see it this is the normal one which we have but when we are suffering from anemia we have less red blood count here see you can see here difference in both the pictures likewise it is caused due to lack of iron in the blood so what we need to do to cure it we need to intake such foods which are rich with iron like we all know iron rich food spinach and all fish we need to eat a lot egg and all okay so now let's move on to the next that is goiter what it is you can see here we have a normal thyroid gland this is our normal thyroid gland and here this is enlarged thyroid that means it's a goiter the person who's suffering from goiter will have a enlarged thyroid you can see here it looks like that from the outer part the neck part it will be swollen here so it's enlarged thyroid is goiter it is a swelling in the neck region this goiter means this is a swelling in the neck region okay it is caused due to lack of iodine if you are not having sufficient iodine in your body then you might suffer from goiter so what we need to do to prevent this we can prevent this by eating diet rich in <coughs> seafood and iodized salt we all know we use the cooking salt right your mother when she prepares it is important for our body the correct content of iodized salt should enter inside the body it shouldn't be eaten too much also but the right amount has to be taken in our daily diet likewise eating lot of fish different types of fish is really good for our health and take on a daily basis so that we do not suffer from such diseases so these are 
the non communicable diseases we have listed out so now children you can take page number 26 okay let us look at uh, that i mean do you know a thing that human body defends itself against communicable diseases how it defends through six major barriers what and all are they they are tears and then saliva mucus skin and then we have acid and then white blood cells okay let's see how for example tears what they have to tears protect our eyes from germs and dust as tears flow dust and microorganisms are washed away from our eyes when tears are flowing the microorganisms are dust are washed away from our eyes so it protects tears protects us from the microorganisms let's see saliva saliva which we have inside our mouth the saliva it kills certain germs now skin covers the whole body and it does not let any microorganisms to enter our body okay likewise mucus mucus is what mucus is the inner surface of the nose and the windpipe are coated with a sticky material that traps micro microorganisms and prevent them from entering into our body so even nose protects us from the germs and bacteria how you have seen so what do we call that sticky material which traps the microorganism inside our uh, nose is mucus okay so next thing is acid the acid in the stomach it kills many microorganism the, most of the foods might contain germs so this acid inside the stomach kills all that microorganisms when it enters along with the food to our body so likewise acid also plays a major role now next thing is white blood cells normally at least a few germs enter our body you know in a, da a daily basis a few germs definitely enters our body and these germs are killed by the white blood cells our body itself defend ourselves from the communicable diseases so these six major barriers the first step what they do is they try to save us from these germs and microorganisms okay so make sure the diet is proper so that we are healthy and we don't fall frequently sick so make sure that okay now let's see the life skills to prevent the spread of communicable diseases how we can prevent it we have also learned in the previous class but here we can just give a glance in the notes given in the reader also to prevent the spread of communicable diseases wash hands before having your food which we all do right every time three times whenever you are having a snack also wash your hands properly and then have it the next thing do not eat or drink from the roadside stalls you can f see it right we learned in the last class also don't have it better to cook and eat in your house itself drink water collected from the clean source don't drink it from the unclean sources and do not dispose garbage in the water sources always dispose the garbage in the covered bin okay dustbin now next thing do not let water collect in your surroundings so make sure that and trim your nails regularly as i've already taught you that having nails means a lot of germs inside the nails which will go inside our body and will cause infection right next is get vaccinated against diseases okay so these are the life skill how we can prevent the communicable diseases so that's all for today's class we'll meet in the next class thank you